joining us right now from New Hampshire is pollster and political strategist Frank Luntz. Frank, is it far from over or was it done last night? It's, it's somewhere in between. It's, it's, you can see the finish line. And the reason why is twofold. Number one, Donald Trump's support is incredibly intense. In fact, I've never seen anything like this in my 35 years of doing politics. His voters are not looking for anyone else. They're not trying to decide between Trump and Haley. They are completely and passionately pro-Trump. Second, Haley proved last night that she is a tremendous draw among independents, among moderates, among the people who take you from 45 percent of the vote over to over 50 percent. So if you're looking at the primary, Donald Trump is this close to getting the nomination. But if you're looking at the general election, then you have to give a second look to, to Nikki Haley simply because she attracts voters that Trump doesn't. And Andrew, I want to show you something. This is a T-shirt that I was given yesterday by a group that's operating out of is New Hampshire. Is it enough or tough? Push, put, put it up. No, we can't see it. We can't see it well enough. Hold it above your face. Hold it above. Yeah. Enough. Okay. Okay. Is that and a Nikki Haley shirt? No. Yeah, hold it and up that's again. the amazing thing. Oh. It's enough about politics. Enough about negativity. Enough oh, I see. about extremism. It's simply enough. Uh, who's, but who's putting that shirt out? Is Nikki Haley putting that shirt out about Trump, or is Trump putting that shirt, or just broadly? It's just broadly. It's a statement about politics in America right now. And, Andrew, one polling data point that I think is the most important. 70% of Americans don't want Trump versus Biden. They want somebody new and different. And that's who well, that they keep saying that. Believe. And then it seems to be that they're voting very differently. So I don't really understand how and this is. And that's been supposed uh, to enough be the thing case. has been your, you've been saying that, you know, we've had, we've gone back and forth about it. You made that t shirt yourself, Luntz. Yeah, no, how I many did, did not. you make? How many did you make? No, uh, I know. Way, I know. But that's been, know, I see why you held. But how do you say it's, it is, I hate to say it is what it is. That's what Tepper said about 100 times. But with Donald Trump, you're not going to stop. The divisiveness, and that's that's the current milieu that we're going to be in until November. There's just no way around it, unless I don't know. I don't know what could possibly happen, Frank. But it's going to be it's going to be nasty. It's going to be nasty. He can't pick Nikki Haley either, can he? That that would be a great VP for him, but that can't happen. I'm still betting <coughs> on the governor of South Dakota, uh, Nikki um, Christy Noem, oh, as no. the person who Trump is most likely to pick. Or the gentleman who stood next to him yesterday, Tim Scott, because that adds. Here's what's important. It's not just winning the primary, because that you can't win the general election without winning the primary. But if you win the primary and you kill yourself for the general election, what good is that? Trump, if he is the nominee, and I think he will be, if he is the nominee, he still has to go from that 45, 46 percent and put him over the top. And so he needs something broader someone who brings in voters that he doesn't bring in. And the problem is, I don't know if he's humble enough to accept that fact. So just play this out. How is this going to go? And, and, and how much more money is Nikki Haley going to be able to raise, given these numbers? Because she's going to have to, if she's got to go the distance at this point in the ball game, she does have this big fundraiser coming up in a couple of days. But after that, you know, folks only like to bet on people they think are absolutely going to win. Well, look, South Carolina, the polling numbers for her are horrible. Her home state, she's losing by more than two to one. And I don't know if that's going to change. I've been told by her people that the Super Tuesday numbers, where more than 10 states allow independents and Democrats to vote, those states, she has a much greater likelihood of winning because, again, she does draw people who aren't traditionally Republicans. However, Trump is going to kill her for that. And I believe he's going to go more negative. And frankly, Andrew, over the next 24 hours, her statement was made when she was losing by about 6 7% yesterday, maybe 8%. In the end, she lost by double digits. We don't know what's going to happen later today. It is actually possible that she'll say enough with the campaign. In the end, she's going to have to draw among traditional voters. And frankly, Donald Trump's support is so intense, I don't see it happen. 12, 12 is as good as it's going to get for her, probably, Frank. That was, I mean, New Hampshire is as good. And in, in, in Super Tuesday, I'd be surprised if, I mean, if she did 12 at, in any of those states, only losing by 12, that would be shocking, wouldn't it? Do you think she can do single digits in any of those states? 
I'm not. Well, the hostility to Trump is as strong as his support for I Trump. Know. It's crazy. And, well, well, and so we've already polarized around well, let this. Let me ask you then, Frank, get to a general. And let's assume that there's no conviction, though I'd love to hear what you think if there is some kind of conviction. But assuming there's I no conviction. I'd love, to, I'd love it if there were 91 convictions. No, no, convictions. no. But <laughs> if, if, it, if it is head to head, Trump, Trump versus Biden, I'm imagining that that's going to also galvanize Democrats to come out in force as well. The question is do you think that there's enough of them, given the polls that you've also mm. uh, alluded to, where Democrats say that they uh, you know, wish that there was an alternative? Well, Andrew, well, I, I hope all to Democrats bring say your, that, but some Democrats are saying that. I hope to bring on your air the focus group that we just completed with Biden voters, specifically Biden voters who will not be voting for him in 2024. Yes, it is about affordability. Yes, it is about leadership. But in the end, the one thing that Joe Biden cannot impact is his age. And that age issue is going to become greater and greater. Donald Trump has his weaknesses, and they are this wide. But so does Joe Biden. And we're going to have an election of the lesser of two evils. And Joe Biden's support is getting weaker as time goes on. So you think it makes it harder for Joe Biden not a, that, that a Trump win is because people have looked at some of the polls showing that Nikki Haley beats Biden. Right. And it's, a, it's, a, it's a, that she actually beats him more easily. And it was a grand strategy for the Democrats to get Donald right. Trump. You think that's not the case? That's what I'm trying to understand. I think, well, first off, electability does not matter within the Republican Party. They want someone who will fight for you, according to the exit polls that you guys participated in. A fighter is more important than electability. However, okay. when push comes to shove, that age issue makes Biden so weak that I'm surprised that organized Democrats, congressional Democrats, senatorial Democrats, the Democratic Party for, for the right. governors has not said enough to Joe right. Biden because he is the weakest Democrat against Donald Trump.